Hello there YouTube, thanks very much for joining me, I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and today we're going to be having a look at this Gemini tank from uh, Vaporesso. Uh, obviously we looked at the Tarot mod from Vaporesso the other day and today we, I've done this as a separate review for a reason. So we're going to have a look at this tank first, we'll go down, check it out, take it all apart and then we'll come back up and, uh, and have a little look and see how she vapes. Let's get on with it. Come on then. Okay, so here we are up close with the Gemini RTA from Vaporesso. So, <clears throat> excuse me, just going through a quick uh, go around the packaging there. Gemini, Vaporesso, Gemini, Vaporesso. And on the back, we've got some information there with a perfect airflow system. Apologies, you can see the reflection of my camera. Uh, zero blind spot, multi-angle airflow. We'll come to that in a second. Uh, full range use, direct along mag to lung uh, we'll try that out in a bit as well more drip tip options 13 and a half mil drip tip set inside including 510 drip tip connector um, and basically you can you can have a read of that little little lot if you want to pause it and carry on so <clears throat> let's break it down I've really suddenly I was fine before I put the camera on and now I am croaky as you like so I've given this a wash out so it may not be absolutely perfect but obviously I have been using it quite a lot we'll come back to to that in a second and we'll see what extras we get with this little setup so we get all of this good stuff obviously we've got an allen key there here we've got nothing on that side and some information going on there pretty much uh, just a breakdown of what the uh, what the tanks all about and interestingly, it shows it doesn't show that you can break the tank apart there, but you can, well, unless I've just broken it, of course. But <laughs> but you can. So take the uh, bit of paper off here, and in here we have got a uh, oh, a normal kind of five ten drip tip. We have got in here an excessively long bag. In fact, let's tip this out so we can see it all. It's rather crumbled. They need a bigger bag, really, don't they? <laughs> okay, out you come. Out you come. Come on. Come on. There's one of you left. Out you come. So what we've got is we have <clears throat> a couple more orange uh, O-rings for, uh, for the tank itself. We've got a couple of clear O-rings that we should see in a minute. We've got three extra post screws and we've got some Clapton, uh, single strand Clapton wires that by the look of them have uh, no resistance wire, um, no resistance wire sort of attached to them. Let me just see if I can show you that so you know what the what the uh, what the wire is all about now if I do some of this dun -dun, it's magic dry knuckles um, yeah so you can see where you've got the little sort of spikes here where the no resistance wire is attached to the legs of the Claptons now I've not used these Claptons that come with it but I may install them um, for shits and giggles uh, for this for the rest of this video we'll see uh, but and then we've got the uh, <clears throat> the normal 510 adapter there right so let's go back to the tank itself move all these little puppies out of the way try not to lose those screws the amount of times that happens it's ridiculous oh sorry and we've also got a spare uh, pyrex tank in there as well right let me just make sure my focus is up where it needs to be <clears throat> Okay, so here is the uh, the Vaporesso Gemini tank with the hair on it. Tell you, spaniel hair gets absolutely everywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's the uh, here's the tank, as I said. Now we're going to break this all the way down so we can see all the individual parts and how it kind of goes together. Now, looks wise, I think it's going to be one of those things you you you're kind of quite happy with the look of it or not. Uh, we've got a nice deep in Vaporesso engraving along here, which is quite rough to the touch, but it's a it's a super deep engraving. Uh, we've got the little sort of Gemini logo going on here and the star sign kind of logo going on here. 
um, which we can see in a moment. But the, I think the thing that may or may not put a few people off is the the ugly but functional kind of um, is that knurling when you get the uh, when you just get bits on rather than the crosshatch. But the, uh, the 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 sort of the the shape of these parts here and all the lines and everything that that creates because uh, obviously they don't match up to the the very top and the very bottom don't match up to the rings that are next to it so if you have a little bit of ocd <laughs> that's gonna drive you bonkers but um but no i mean with regards to uh they do kind of match up i suppose no they don't not really um uh, yeah, so if that's the sort of thing that's uh, that's going to drive you bonkers, then then that's that. But it is what it is, and to be honest, I don't think it's a it's a horrifically ugly tank. Now let's take this apart as much as we can. So we've got the wide board drip tip going on here, and that is uh, quite a quite a, a large bastard there. If we compare it to the the uh, the one that it comes with, the five ten one. I know I should turn the uh, turn up the turn up the exposure for that but hopefully you can get an idea if I can show you there we go you can see that this one is a little bit more of a wider ball than this one so you've got a little bit extra to play with now to take this apart what we'll do is we'll take off the uh, the fill part at the top that comes off in one piece. Now I'll explain about these. Uh, this is giving you an airflow that goes directly down to your coils. This is not an airflow that is introduced at the drip tip, so sort of, sort of post uh, post vapor to kind of cool it down and thin it out and reduce both clouds and flavor that a lot of people kind of have, have been doing for a little while. What this is actually doing is it allows air in hang you on let me get to there we go you can see that i'm opening that now that's open now it allows air to come in here and see if i can get that so you can see it hold on right can you see this ring under here there's kind of an area under there where the airflow goes down under here where you would expect a sort of an o-ring to be but that, that's not an o-ring because airflow is going down onto here and then if you look at the top of this chimney if i can get it into uh, into focus you can see that there are airflow holes underneath this o-ring now what this is designed to do is take air directly down the shaft uh, misses, and uh, along the outside of the chimney and hit the coil directly before coming up under the chimney. So that's a kind of an interesting idea. I think the, is it the Heracles Plus does a very similar thing? But uh, but that is, uh, you know, that's a, an interesting little idea if you did want extra airflow. To be honest, it's not something I've really used that much, but we may have a, a little blast of that in a bit. So here we go with the rest of the tank. Just trying to find out where the best place of being in focus is. So what we'll do is now take the, uh, if we take this whole tank section off, we can unscrew this top section and you can see here that's where the air is going down either side of the chimney take the tank off and here we go for this section this is your main barrel and juice control over going on here now that's a sort of a, a little bit of a better look at the uh, the laser engraving by the looks of it going on here and here plenty of o-rings i've not really found any issues with the threading on it or anything along those lines now here we've got the uh the, the uh, little bits of cotton poking out but here we've got the uh, the deck itself now it's slightly different you've got the you've got the velocity style obviously uh as everything seems to have currently but let me just get a pointy thing. Um, so you've got the velocity style with the two posts. Reasonable size post holes. You can get quite a few different builds in here. I have managed to get uh, dual gauge, uh, dual Clapton 26 gauge with uh, a, a dual Clapton, can't even talk, dual core Claptons with 26 gauge core and 36 gauge Canthal on the outside in there. 
Uh, but I've also been using things like Twisted and, and, and so on as well. So uh, I've not had any major problems. Mind you, I've not put any ridiculous builds in there, but that has been fine and dandy. The airflow holes are nice and big and chunky, uh, which is what you would, you would expect. Now, this third post here, this is air actually coming out at the uh, at the sort of center of the coil from behind if you like so i think that's what they mean when they said on the box about the uh, um full range of use i think i think that's what they were uh, they were alluring to there is it the full range of loose no the zero blind spot multi-angle airflow that's what they've uh, referred to it as and so this air here is coming up through the uh, through the base and as well as coming uh, up through these air holes it's also the option of uh, of some of that bad boy as well so you know that's giving you uh, that's giving you a little bit more air i've not really noticed any benefit but it uh, it certainly helps with the amount of air um, if anything i think we're now getting to the stage where this small chimney uh, is going to be getting maxed out so that'll be the potentially the choke point with the amount of air that we've got going on here or it's very very close and they've worked it out very very cleverly now much like the what was it the griffin that i looked at not so long ago we've got one of these little rings that goes around the outside uh it's not essential to be on there to be honest it's you can you can uh, you can uh, sort of take it off if you want now unlike the griffin i have not had this ring get stuck on the inside of the uh, the chimney uh and uh, and this area up in here whereas the the the, the griffin i certainly did the threading on it is uh, is fun but uh, but you can get that on there like that now you've got nice wide juice panels going on here but the hole up here if you're going to try and uh try and uh, sort of grab those coils if you like is very very small so what you're aiming to do is really kind of put your put your wick did i say coils i meant wick put your wick down the hole and then kind of it rests on that sort of shelf that you can see um under here if, if you can kind of make out what i'm where i'm, where I'm going with that um so yeah so you're not trying to put your wick all the way down because as you see there is some sort of choke points in there which uh, which will make your wick quite small and if you're putting decent sized coils on here with a three mil id then you're going to have to trim or you do trim your, your your wick a fair amount to be able to sort of not have it crushed because as i've said many times before you do not want to crush your wick because that will make it wick way less effectively it needs to be kind of slightly airy so that the individual fibers of it can suck up the juice especially if you're using a higher vg now this is as far as i've been able to break this down obviously we can take this ring off again um this is as far as i've been able to break this one down so i really wanted to see where the airflow for this section was coming from i can i imagine it's just coming up from underneath this kind of main build deck area now one of the things that you have got on here is quite a sort of a, a sticky outy 510 which is good and uh i have undone that taken that out so it's adjustable and given that a push given that a damn good push and it doesn't loosen up the positive post that positive post is there in and super snug so uh so yeah that's not going anywhere however um i think depending on what you're using um that does stick out quite quite well uh, so I'm quite happy with that, to be honest with you. Now, what I uh, you have got sort of a little bit extra length on the overall threads there because of this sticky outy thing, um, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's something that you'll have to work out and see if it goes on all of your mods. Now, underneath we've got a little bit more uh, laser engraving, Gemini RTA, designed and manufactured by Vaporesso. Now, this has no uh, serial numbers or anything like that on there. I don't know if that's going to be something that they are they they are going to be doing. Doing or will be doing um it is this was sent to me directly from vapor so so uh, i know it's uh, i know it's spot on the final thing i want to just mention on here is the fact that the air in or the airflow control ring does have stoppers on it so it doesn't just turn indefinitely which makes things very important when you're when you're tightening up the tank and when you're adjusting the juice flow because popping this bad boy together again for a second let me just pop these uh 
these sections together. You do want to make sure that they are all nice and snug. Mine were a little bit loose, especially around the tank section because I've taken it apart to clean it. So you do want to make sure that this is nice and tight, uh, but don't cut your fingers. I gave myself a little cutty poos, gave myself a boo-boo uh, there earlier on doing this, but there we go. So that's that in there. Let me pop that ring on there just for completeness sake. Da da da, went on a lot easier that time. Okay, so now when you're when you're uh, when you're tightening the tank down, you want to hold this top ring of knurling so you can get that nice and snug. Once you've got that nice and snug, you can then hold the base and adjust your uh, juice flow holes if that makes sense. So holding on to this section because if this is loose. If you're screwing the tank on and you try and hold just this bottom section, then it's uh, it's it's going to do this. It's going to spin. Da -da -da. So you're not going to get that nice and snug. So hold that that sort of next ring just to give it a little bit extra extra purchase, if you like. That way, I found that the juice flow control isn't too loose. It's still loose, but it's not too loose, and you can control it, and it stays as is when you uh, if you pick your tank up um, at your pocket. Um, sort of attached to the, the the mod if that makes sense so yeah that is as far as uh, i can show you on there what i'm going to do is i will shall i put those stock coils in should i put the, i'll put the stock coils in just i'm not a fan of stock coils but i'll stick those in just for testing sake and we'll see what this is all about we'll go back up top have a little vape and have a little chat Alrighty then. Okay, so that was the up close and personal with the Gemini RTA from Vaporesso. Now I, I specified the RTA because they do do a tank as well where their C cells uh, go inside of, which uh, are apparently are very good. I've not tried one, but uh, but yeah, it's not the same tank. I don't think they do an adapter. So, which is a bit of a shame because if you got one, it would be great to have the option of both rebuildable or the cells. But uh, as far as I can tell, you've got the tank or the RTA. Now, what I've uh, put in here, as I said in the up close, was the Claptons that come with this bad boy. And uh, they are rocking out at around 0.5 uh, one kind of area. Now, it came up to 0.52 on my uh, on my uh, on my coil master. But it's uh, yeah, 0.51 on this uh, on this vape forward classic at the moment. Now they are a two and a half mil, uh, approximately two and a half mil ID single core Claptons with, uh, as I said, resistance or no resistance legs soldered to them. I don't really see the point in that on these particular ones, to be honest with you, because there's very very little of the leg uh, kind of involved in it. But and I don't think that really makes a huge amount of distant uh, difference to your overall resistance. However. Uh, that's what comes with it. That's what's in there now. I've got the juice flow wide open. The airflow is wide open, but the the, the bottom airflow is wide open. But I've closed out the top with the wide bore drip tip going on at, let's bang this on, 50 watts. Plenty of airflow going on there. It's not the biggest concentration of flavour. Let me pop on the. I've got the kind of the thinner bore drip tip with the uh, with the little adapter, which is awfully loose, by the way. And that I've not uh, I've not kind of uh, put juice around the O-rings on this, but it is it is very kind of droppy in the outy. So you wouldn't be picking up your mod uh, by your drip tip. Oh, that's for sure. Now let's have a little blast. Now, whilst I'm a fan of wideboard drip tips, this one actually feels more comfortable to me. But that's just me. And the airflow is big, you know, you've got a lot going on. Um, with the airflow at the top open as well. There is plenty of air there. I think we can probably take this up a little bit more. Let's... Uh, Let's put some more power through there and see how she deals with a cheeky little 66.6 .6 watts. Um, <laughs> such a geek. Right, 66.6 .6 watts going on there now. Do 
Yeah, and it works fine. It does everything. It's it's very, very vapey. Let's use another hat to do a little bit of this. I really need a fan, but all the fans go in the background, which is, it, you, just, you don't need that, do you? Um, <coughs> excuse me. That's a little bit better. Not much, but a little bit. So it does produce vapor. It's not the thickest, densest vapor because of the, uh, all of that airflow. Obviously, if you take it up even more, it's going to... Uh, it's, let's have a look and see if it denses out a little bit um, and how we put up with... I've got high VG uh, grumpy custard in here at the moment. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's 80 watts, no problem. No issues with that whatsoever. And I have wound this up uh, in testing as well. And it's been fine. It wicks perfectly fine as long as you get the wicks right. Now, what I might do up here in this corner, up here is pop a little kind of video thing um, to to show you, kind of give you an idea of how I've, uh, how I've wicked it and showing the coils involved. If I have done that, then you're not going to see my hand. If I haven't done that, because I'm not as technical friendly as I thought I was, then, uh, then uh, you probably just saw my hand and it wasn't really very good. But, <laughs> but trust me, it's in here. Now, is this tank anything new? I'm told that it's very similar to the Heracles Plus. I've not had a Heracles Plus, so I can't uh, I can't say anything about that. That 510 on this Classic is uh, is making it sort of stand up, so there is quite the gap there. Now let me just pop it on another device for a moment, just to see if that gap is uh, is maintained on another style of device. Uh, let me pop it on the Ohm Wrecker or the Home Wrecker. Yeah, the home record at the moment and that's sitting pretty flush so there's no gaps on that one but it's going to be very dependent on the device that you put it on now as i said new no i don't think so is it any good well to be honest it's it's another it's another kind of you know rebuildable tank out miser that wicks pretty well um Let's have a little look. I did have a quick uh, quick Google, and the first people that came up in the UK with it in stock was a company called SubohmMasters.uk. Now, I've not used them. I don't know if they're any good. I'm not I'm not saying they're, they're, they're great or, or not. Uh, I've never used them. So, uh, But they are selling these at $27.99. So $27.99 gets you a fair tank with a fair amount of spares, with good airflow, um, and the wicks pretty well. You know, you are still going to get, especially as it's juicy, this this uh, juice control, as in just turning the whole tank to close down your control, is going to be something that is going to get looser. It's still much like if you saw my Griffin review, um, you know, certain holes don't line up perfectly, uh, but they are better than I had with the Griffin. Um, so, you know, that, that helps the OCD a little bit, but not doesn't fix it. But as a tank, as I said, it's big airflow. It's, uh, it's fairly easy. You can maintain it pretty easily because you can pull it all apart, uh, without any major issues. The threading has been absolutely fine on everything. Puff, it can be a little bit of a pain in the cock to get the uh, that little ring um, threaded down if you've done that once you've done your uh, once you've juiced up your your coils. It's a messy thing when you when you're putting those uh, that ring down. I find the most effective way is doing it once the coil or once the wick is juiced because that way it kind of stays where you put it. And then you sort of tease it with a little tiny screwdriver to get it to sit where you want it to. And uh, because you're doing that, that does make it a little bit messy because you, in places, squeeze out little bits of juice. Excuse me, hiccups. But otherwise, it's not a bad tank. And the reason I wanted to review this separately to the Taro is because uh, I wasn't a fan of the Taro. But as far as tanks go, if these are your thing... Uh, then this is is not a bad one. You know, you could you could certainly do a lot worse for your money. Just close the airflow off completely, idiot. Uh, 
and at that uh, at that 80 watts that is giving me sort of a a warm vape that's that's quite pleasant you know it's it's quite pleasant and as for for juice consumption it's going to be down to exactly how much vaping you do the type of course you get in there the amount of vaping you do and the uh, the temperature that you're going to vape at obviously so that's it ladies and gentlemen that's my uh, kind of idea of the vaporesso gemini it's a pretty good tank for what it does for sure and flavor isn't too bad on it either considering you've got quite the chimney kind of over the top of your of your coils the flavor isn't too shabby at all either uh, i still don't really get the benefit of this extra air coming in from the top that's not something that has kind of made me think wow that really helps apart from making the whole thing a bit noisier so and that's it ladies and gentlemen i've been dean the vaping biker this has been the gemini tank from vaporesso a sub 30 pound uh, rebuildable tank atomizer which is none too shabby so if you like that sort of thing that could be for you so i've not found any issues with it whatsoever which i'm quite pleased about so thanks very much for watching if you liked it please check out my other videos hit the subscribe button click on a like here and there and uh, let me know what you think if you have one thanks very much for watching i will see you on the next one make sure you go out there and you have it larger. I'm fading it's come to an end I feel an obligation to start again